yeah, yeah. I've, I've, you, ser I've, you... ser I've certainly seen that. But, but at the same time, um, how does the issue of equal love apply to a woman in a diocese that's taken a mm. traditionalist stance? Uh, um, and with the best friend of the world, if you don't think she's actually a priest, it's going to be hard for her to feel equally loved, doesn't it? But I'm not sure L love requires agreement on all things, mm. actually. And I think if, if you have as a premise that um, there is an unsureness about this, which, which I do, uh, I, um, I think I can honestly say you can, well, you can facilitate someone's ministry even if you don't, even if you self have an unsureness about it. I mean, this is this goes on now. There's no no-go diocese, for example. No, not now. I mean, I suppose some not would say now. that's largely because of the successful campaigning by those who wanted to break up well, what seemed uh, to be uh, these little. Uh, well, no. Uh, to be, I think to be fair, because I, I I was in a diocese that probably was one of the most likely to declare itself a no-go area, and the first thing that Eric Kemp said after the ordination of women as priests is that this diocese will not be a no-go area. Mm. In other words, the possibility of a no-go area was not taken up. For a long time there weren't vision. many women incumbents, were there? That's, tr that's true. That's, that's true. That is not the case now. That's it's not the, the case, case now. now. I'm, I'm glad we touched on that, though, because yeah. it, it is important yeah, to remember, I do. isn't it, that this is also a question about the position of women priests in the church. It's not just a question about the care of uh, uh, parishes. No, that's, and that's, clearly that's whatever, true. And what, clearly whatever is arrived at needs yeah. to work as well as it can for everybody. I, I think what, what attracts me about the language you've been using um, is that there's a sort of modesty and humility about it. Um, it's not making a, a cast iron truth claim for one's own position. It's just saying, uh, you know, we're all working on together. We operate sometimes from quite difficult theological, mm, quite mm. different theological principles. Um, uh, and we, you know, we we can't function <clears throat> as if um, a change we want to introduce is so certain and so unquestionable mm. that anybody wanted to continue the way things have been before s suddenly is a heretic. Mm. Um, I I like the the sort of softness and porousness that brings in because I I, I feel you know from conversations I've had the line one sometimes picks up from the traditionalist wing is rather uh, rather hard and fast I think a and mm. from the liberal wing as well yes I think I think I think that is this whereas <coughs> excuse me I think that's true but if you look at, at some of the earlier reports and even the Rochester report you know it does it does actually begin with that humility actually mm. if you look at the at the work that was done that that said, when we're, when, when we're trying to discover the truth, where do we look? Now, I suppose I have a stronger emphasis, or tradition has a stronger emphasis on looking at what does the whole church say about this? Beyond our branch, one might put it that way. Uh, I don't mean other people don't, but in terms of emphasis. You know, the Anglo-Catholic tradition, um, I think way back in the 1920s, the first Anglo-Catholic priest convention said, we must concur with those things about which the church East and West agree. Mm. It's one of the reasons, for example, that married clergy was fine, because, <coughs> because it was not a matter on which the church East and West agreed. And the, the disagreed. disagreed, rather. So um, calling ourselves Catholic definitely meant that we, one might, we are constrained, I might mm. say, by these things. Now, I don't mean that other people don't feel a constraint. I just don't think they feel it as much, or they're more willing to to maybe launch out into the deep with something. Uh, now that's all there, actually. But somehow, in, in the, once we get into the synodical process, that sort of gets parked. And actually, there wasn't enough discussion about it. Mm. Rochester Report almost had no discussion. Mm. The discussions have been, how do we do this? Rather than reflection, enough reflection about, about um, the mystery of discovering truth and the constraints upon it, and, 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 and the times too, reflecting about the times when it's right to, or some will feel it's right, to launch out and take the risk. Mm. Um, now, if we forget that sort of nuance, one might say, or humility that says, we accept that we've always taught that these gifts 
in a renewed way are the same gifts from the early, ch from the early days. Mm. Apostolic succession, we might say. Not just pipeline, but, but enabled to perceive it. So that if, well, if I can put it this way, if a bishop from the fifth century could come to the Church of England now, he'd say, that's my brother. Mm. He's, he's fulfilling the same task. He's doing the same thing. So it's not just a pipeline thing, a, a, a guarantee. It's the life. Mm. So I accept, of course, that those who, who, who ordain women to the presbyterate and priesthood and those who will to the episcopate will do so in good faith. Of course. All I'm asking is that we do not forget, and more than that, we put in place uh, something that reflects the basic premise. Mm. That this is a gift that is not simply ours. This is a gift that until pretty recently we believed we did not have authority to, to uh, alter, change or add to whatever. You know. yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that that we honour that. Yeah. We, we honour our past by letting it live now. Yeah. And, and, and that... Wanted, wanted to continue in that tradition um, as long as the rest of the Catholic Church in our day can't countenance the change. Um, wanted to continue in that tradition can't be treated as outrageous. Yeah. I mean, how can it... I don't understand, given the language and discussion about... Um, um, accepting that historically and even biblically there may be some questions, that, that both views are equally valid, why it feels mm. that, that what is the majority view in the Church Catholic is, is unjust. And that you can believe it, but you can't sort of live it. Yes. Okay. You, you, yeah. you can believe yeah. it personally, because but the, we're the, not going to structure the, the, the living the, of it. I suppose the hard question, in a way, obviously the, the theological questions are important, but also there's a sort of emotional dimension, isn't there? Really, I mean, how how do we live together? How can we bear uh, to be w with one another when we can't find a mind on this? There's a wonderful sermon um, I found very helpful when I was at theological college, um, preached by Rowan Williams as chaplain mm. of Westgate, uh, where I trained. 20 years previously, yeah. called Different Christs, yeah. Different uh, Christs, and he captures the, the, the pain of seminary life yes. beautifully, because people, people come along, you know, maybe feeling rather confident in their faith, and they realise that other people actually think, pray, and relate to one another totally differently on the basis of a sincere, mm. well-founded, deep faith. Mm. And we we can't find a way to share it. You know, mm. it's it's a painful yes, yes. moment. That seems to be where we are in the church. And I think we maybe as much as just legislation. You know, we we need a renewal of our uh, you know our our ability to live together. And, and and I suppose my own view on this is would certainly be unpopular, and it's not going to happen. I don't think coming up with a form of words that will get it through mm. because we've changed the word to respect will get us anywhere when there isn't the respect. And you can have a legal, you can, the, you can even find a legal definition of respect which becomes a safeguard, mm. which itself is a sign that there's a problem about believing the respect. Yeah, but um, yes, maybe it's just not going to happen. I mean, I, I, I think of the example of gay clergy who I think, mm. you know, function well, perhaps not entirely happily, working alongside um, other clergy who doubt their legitimacy, mm. in some cases even doubt their salvation, yeah. um, people manage to coexist and get along. It, it seems to me to ask for inclusion is one thing, to ask for one's own position to be the only legitimate position is quite another. Um, well, I, don't, I think, I, yeah. I think mm. for, for both, uh, you know, women priests and those who support the ordination of women, and for traditionalists, um, a sense of oneself as part of a diverse and complex and somewhat tense coalition <laughs> under Christ, as it were, that's, 
that's what we are aiming for. And but, it, but it seems that, the, the, that there's a big push, really, for the liberal view on ordination to sweep all before it. And I think, I think that's where I'm uneasy. And yes. that's, that's why I feel I need to occupy this yeah. Yeah. middle and, ground. Yeah, and, I'm, and I'm grateful for it. I'm, and I think, I think the, the problem is goes back to something about the English. And I'm not, I, I, it's not, uh, I'm not impugning people's integrity or anything mm. like that. But, but, but on the ground, you see, one of the, one of the things that, that makes me nervous about, well, I've already mentioned, you know, voting for legislation before you even know how it's going to, going to be lived in terms of the code of practice. I mean, what, what I could not understand, if, if, if that vision that you have is the one that we want in the church, what, why it was perfectly all right to put something in a code of practice and not in legislation. Why does it become more uh, uh, moral? Because some people put the amendment as sort of immoral almost, really demeaning to women, um, impossible to live with. Mm. And I tried to listen to why people felt that. But they said, well, that can go in a code of practice. That, well, that just makes me feel, well, you can't change legislation, but you can change code of practice as you go along. So we'll put up with this in some people. We'll put up with these people until they die out, because that's a gracious thing to do. Because we're not the sort of church that boots you up the backside and tells you yes, to get oh, out. But you hear this all the time, don't you? Well, they'll, they'll wither on the vine. They'll, wi you know? they'll, they'll wither on the vine. So we'll put it in a code of practice because we'll be able to get rid of the code of practice. Now, I'm long enough in the tooth to, to have been around when there were bishops appointed, consecrated, who then said, I wasn't there when the act of synod was voted for. I don't feel bound by it. Mm. Uh, we know that the act of synod, everybody knows that the act of synod was patchy in the way it was honoured. And there was no real procedure for doing anything about that. Because a diocese is a diocese. You know, you might get wrapped on the knuckles or whatever. But, but people kept being made diocesan bishops who weren't really honouring the act of synod. I'm not going to give you a list of names, but I just know some. Yeah. And, and so this equal love just didn't seem to be there on the ground. And, and I, I've got no evidence to suggest with some noble exceptions, that actually the code of practice will, will, will be any different. I think those with the power will be the ones who will interpret it, to be honest, in the same way that those very few traditionalists have been involved in either the writing of the legislation and, and the sort of the uh, sample codes. So your, th your point where you said, well, I feel, you know, who am I to, to tell you what you need? Mm. In the process, I think it, it's fair to say that, that there was very little of that. Okay. And, and I'm fearful that that all points to, to, the, to a reality about, about the long-term future. Mm. And, and a sort of lip service to the notion that there is a provisionality about this action in the Church Catholic, which requires a, an Anglican humility, the sort of humility okay. that you find in someone like Michael Ramsey, who, who says somewhere oh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sermon, I think at the 68 Lambeth Conference, if I got the year right, um, um, you know, we've come to Canterbury, which is not, first of all, Anglican, but Catholic, mm. and uh, calling for a humility that says, doesn't mean you don't do anything, mm. um, but it would be an act of humility to live with a stream of us. I don't mean hermetically sealed. Mm. Um, we don't, ecumenically, we don't live these days. Here at Walsingham, we spend half our life mm. interplaying between Catholic and Anglican. Mm. I mean, it's normal, it's mm. normal. And as you say, plenty of non-traditionalists. Yeah, absolutely. Come it's and just, they it's bring just their clergy, male or female, with yeah, them. It's and just normal. It's yeah. just normal. And um, uh, I just can't see why we can't just make that provision. And, and uh, I don't think one needs to come to the conclusion, though I must listen to my sisters in Christ who feel this, that to create this, 
would be, would be so demeaning, too demeaning to be acceptable.